Uh, let me start uh, the, ses uh, uh, the session four, errors in SLR, detection, uh, mitigation, and modeling. Uh, the ch session chair is actually the same, uh, myself and Jose. Uh, the first speaker is Michael Steindorfer. The title is probably, I don't have to mention the title, you will see. <laughs> Yeah, actually, I'm, I'm in a sort of interesting situation for myself as well. Um, yeah, I, I actually, I'm coming up here, up here to tell you that I'm not able to give the presentation you are expecting. So please forget about the title you were, you were seeing. But as I didn't really like to, let's go back, uh, back to the audience again without saying any, anything, I, I prepared a, a backup presentation talking about something different now. Um, so, yeah, the title of the talk today will be about a tool for simulating SLR residuals. Um, yeah, and also about the placement of backup bridge reflectors for future satellite missions. Um, yeah, I am, um, I am actually allowed to give a summary about the talk which, uh, which I intended to give. So basically, this is the slide you will, you will get uh, about the the original talk I have. So yeah, basically this is about alternative normal points for the, uh, formation strategies for Galileo satellites. So this is based on yaw steering and symmetry conditions. So as you see, um, the panel is turning uh, with respect to the observing station and it's some, it's some different uh, orientations with respect to the observer. The panel will be in some sort of symmetry conditions where some retros align at, at, at equal ranges with respect to the observer. And for this uh, activity, we were analyzing the satellite signature. As I said before, multiple retros at the equal range. And yeah, sometimes, um, for example, 11 rows of corner cube retro reflectors at equal distances appear. And it was then possible to calculate once uh, just the incident angle on the panel from, from these range differences and also to form normal points, individual normal points for each of these rows. Actually, it is then also possible to identify the central, the central uh, normal point of this. And at the end, we found out that those, uh, those normal points, they are actually closer to the BOD orbit by an order of three millimeters. So there was an offset according to these symmetry conditions. Yeah, so much about the summary I can give you about the talk you were expecting. Um, yeah, backup talk. Um, I'm talking about a retroreflector-based attitude detection system. And for that, we um, developed a residual simulation tool. Yeah, just to give you a short, short overview over the tool. So basically, as I said before, and this is a tool to simulate laser ranging observed minus calculated residuals. Just to give you a, give you a summary on how it works, so we define input files with the satellite retroreflector configurations normal point, uh, normal vector uh, of the retroreflectors, so the, the yeah, orientation of the retroreflectors, basically. Um, rotation period is possible to define for this, for this satellite. So yeah, basically, you could select arbitrarily uh, rotation period and rotation orientation of these satellites and choose a reference frame, Nadia pointing, yaw steering, whatever you want. And of course, define when you want to evaluate this, um, these uh, passes. Um, then, as you all know, you have to do some orbit predictions, could, e could either be TLE-based or CPFs, um, yeah, and then you also need station coordinates. Um, Lagrange interpolation, basically to make the, make the simulation process smoother and, and this way it doesn't take that much time to simulate that. Then we rotate the satellite around some fixed axis in the reference coordinate frame and calculate the residuals and actually apply the rotated uh, satellite, satellite um, to the, to the um, selected reference coordinate frame. Um, what is the aim of the project? Actually, uh, to provide a tool to assess the placement of backup retroreflectors on, on, on new satellite missions. So in, either in addition to the, to the POD per pyramid which is existing, or just, yeah, just to place uh, retroreflectors on side faces, for example, on these on this satellite missions, which uh, yeah, basically would have, have no retroreflectors uh, yeah, from start. 
Um, just a first uh, assessment of the validation of the tool. So basically what was done here, um, uh, the retroreflector array of the Galileo satellite was, was simulated. So basically you have one, one line on the right side, these are the residuals, for each of the retroreflectors. And the residuals, uh, the retroreflectors in these in this residual simulations, they are color coded by lines. So you see from blue to blue and all the different colors, these are these retroreflectors in the residuals all, all belong to one color. And as I was speaking to the symmetry conditions relative to the observer, um, you see this is half, half of a pass, uh, not, not half of a pass, but half of a day simulated of simulation of, of SLR residuals. You see that there are certain conditions throughout the day where some retroreflectors are aligning at equal, equal ranges. So you, in this case, you see that all, all blue, blue retroreflectors are in the same range. This we are calling 90 degree symmetry conditions with respect to the, to the observer. And then later on, you have a 60 degree symmetry, symmetry condition, um, 20 ro rows of retroreflectors actually corresponding to a symmetry uh, in this direction. And also in, at the very beginning, you have a 30 degree symmetry pass, rotating the panel with respect to the observer in a different way. Um, yeah, from, from these um, distances, distances between those columns forming, you can actually uh, get an indication on the incident angle of the panel. And what you also see in those simulations is that, that the overall spread of the residuals is also depending on the incident angle. So this can be predicted what we actually were doing is implement these uh, residual simulations for the different uh, satellites into our uh, post-processing tool. And then we are able to identify uh, the different columns. You see on the right side, uh, the left side, sorry, um, you see actually a data set of uh, Galileo satellites simulated, uh, uh, measured during that time. And, up, oh, wrong direction. What you then see is this is an overlay of the simulated residuals, which is like really, really corresponding to the, to the number, of, number of rows forming when you're looking at the, at the, at the histogram. Um, second validation of the, of the tool um, uh, by Jason, Jason 3, actually Nadia pointing the satellite, as you, all, as, as you all know. So below you see the residual simulations, and above you see the, the single single photon based residuals um, uh, actually orbit cleaned in patches to make the baseline flat here in the residuals and when I just uh, show the simulated uh, yeah the simulated data set you see that you can you can really find predict those patches you're seeing for example here and here they're coming coming out quite quite clear in the residuals in the residuals in the simulated residuals so yeah, during post-processing, this might be might be a help for yeah for analyzing data sets where, where you have satellite signature. Um, yeah, the basic background of the simulation tool, as I said before, um, yeah, satellites can start to tumble, and yeah, we uh, future satellite missions intend to place backup retros on their on their side faces, different number of them. So yeah, basically, yeah, this is assisting satellite missions uh, after, their, after their lifetime to yeah, evaluate tumbling motion behavior, for example. Yeah, just to give you some simulations of the tool of rotating satellites. So basically what was, what was analyzed here is a simple box satellite. And then here on the right side, you see the placement of the of the retroreflectors. So this is basically a very simple placement of, of between one and four retroreflectors. In this case, there is no Nadir, Nadir satellite on the, on the uh, no, no POD pyramid on the Nadir side. So on the below, below here on the left, you see the simulations. The, in, in this example, the rotation period was 180 seconds. The rotated, uh, the rotation axis of the satellite was, was uh, through A1 and A3 surface, so through this and this surface if you fold, fold the uh, box satellite in this case. Yeah, and then the, the rotation axis was aligned uh, through uh, GCRS in the, in the 100 direction, but you could choose arbitrarily um, of rotation axis pointing in GCRS or, where, or, or wherever. Yeah, and there you see the residuals, how they would look like. Each retroreflector of each side is color coded and then you see this typical pattern forming, which allows you actually from the residual data set to, 
um, to identify the surfaces. Um, what you also see from the tool, um, due, to, to, due to the rotation, there is some apparent, period, apparent rotation period appearing. Um, you can actually see that the rotation from the first uh, um, patch here to the second one is a bit shorter than from, the, from here to here. Basically, the satellite moving along orbit, it, ju it just has to complete a f uh, uh, or needs more time to co complete the full rotation with respect to, to the observing station. That's the reason. And the tool uh, also, of course, um, yeah, allows to analyze this behavior. Um, yeah, next, uh, you can see that there is uh, distinguishability between the surfaces between the distances between the central, central line of these four retroreflectors, you can, you can get an idea on the incident angle. And also you can see that um, yeah, equal retroreflectors, they point to a similar, similar looking pattern. So actually you would really need more retroreflectors um, to clearly identify between these patterns. Um, yeah, basically, basically there is an idea what, what can be done about that. I will talk on, about that on the next slide. Um, also, you can get an idea on the, on, the rotation or, or on the rotation direction of the satellite when looking at the, at the, at the, sequence, of, the sequence of the retroreflector patterns, uh, residual patterns appearing here. So you can see four retroreflectors followed by one, followed by three. This indicates the rotation direction of this, of this uh, yeah, box type satellite. And yeah, on the next slide, this is just a variation of the rotation period. You see what, what is happening is that the residual patterns are, are stretched accordingly. You see similar patterns appearing, but uh, yeah, it, they are, they are uh, of course, in a, in a longer, longer period of time. So, so this was the same pass as before, but just for 50 seconds, 100 seconds, and 200 seconds rotation period. And as you all know, as the, as the typical LEO passes are quite quite um, yeah, low in, with respect to time, uh, cover a short time period, um, yeah, it, is, it might, be some, might be harder to identify the full rotation period, but if you have patterns on the side faces, this actually have, helps you to identify that. Um, yeah, this di distinguishability. If you have two surfaces with an equal number of retroreflectors, as we know uh, in, in SLR, we can really easily identify different retroreflectors which are quite close to each other. So one solution, if you have a similar, uh, similar number of retroreflectors, why not put two of them really, really close together? I mean, for SLR values, not, not that close, but yeah, putting them close together, for example, five centimeter, then you see that one of these four retroreflector patterns actually changes from something like this, which would be similar than the, than the, than the neighboring pattern, to something like this. So you, so you will get um, two retroreflector, uh, retroreflector um, tracks close together, which can, can uh, yeah, allow you to identify that again. Um, yeah, this is just an outlook and summary of what you, what you heard. Um, we have a tool to simulate SLR residuals, which actually can help uh, satellite operators to, to, cho to choose how to place backup retroreflectors on their side faces. Yeah, which is actually um, yeah the plan for future future um, 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 ESA satellites actually currently. Um, yeah, the tool is quite modular, so you can simply iterate through different different setups. And yeah, we ver we verified the measurements with um, residual uh, with um, SLR residual measured by our station. And potential applications are summarized here. So to test different different retroreflector setups, as I said before. Um, it would also be a tool to validate different attitude determination techniques, for example. And as, said, as mentioned here, um, SLR data post-processing, we are implementing that into our, our post-processing tool, yeah, which could actually help during post-processing to help identify the tracks you are actually looking for, as for example seen in the Galileo um, pattern. Yeah, and to acknowledge this was done within the ESA, ESA project study, study retroreflector-based additive detection system, which brings me, yes, to the end of my talk. Thanks. Thank you very much, Mihail. Any questions or comments to Mihail? Yes. Uh, thanks for your talk. Um, I was wondering about the system characteristics. Uh, do you define the power and the pass length as well in your tool? Or how, how do you assess that or how do you define that? 
Yeah, yes, I mean, of course, if, you, if you're going for satellite si signature, you should be in the single photon regime. So, so yes, this is favoring single photon, single photon, um, or yeah, single photon based detection. Detection. So that, yeah, the return rate should be lowered somehow that you're you're at all able to identify those tracks. So this is some sort of lim limitation. So kilohertz, kilohertz, uh, yeah, uh, stations are favor in favor of that. Yes. Hi, um, and many thanks for the talk. Um, you um, mentioned the two bean satellite, um, and I think it's been flying for a while. So, is this um, is the status that um, it has been shown to work already to identify the face, or is it uh, so far a simulation? Um, yes, not only not, not only the two bean, but Technosat satellites. Yes, is it, it ah, is yeah. possible. I mean, Technosat. Yeah, yeah. It is possible to identify the side faces. Yes. I mean, yeah, as, as, as said just before, depending on the on the return rate. Of course, if you have really high return rate, then the favor, then the first uh, the first tracks in the residuals they are they are they are strongly favored. But yeah, it is possible to see those to see those patterns easily in the in the in the uh, yeah residual data. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, let's move on. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, yeah, because of the time. So, yeah. Thank you.